Hello everyone and welcome to another video and welcome to Rome, Italy. Well, it is the winter time, so you're probably wondering what are we doing in Italy during winter? Well, the problem is that during the summer is really pretty, but it's also very, very crowded. Probably not as much this year with the current situation, but there were also a lot of travel restrictions. So double-edged sword there. But if you do visit Italy in winter, you can see all of the big major attractions, the Colosseum and everything else here without that many crowds. There's still gonna be people here, but it's not gonna be that super, super crowded. So we're making our way to the Colosseum right now, and I wanted to take a chance and talk to you guys about actually getting to Rome. We rented a car to drive around Italy, and we drove here as well, which is not recommended um, to do that because driving in Rome not recommended parking in Rome close to impossible so what we did is uh, we took our rental to an underground garage which is about 30 euros a day and we're just gonna leave it there for the whole couple of days that we're gonna be here and welcome to the Colosseum this is gonna be the first attraction that we're gonna visit today we actually have a guided tour and we're very lucky Today we found tickets even for the underground. Now usually the underground closes during the rain and it was closed because of the current situation. So they recently reopened it, we're super lucky. If you guys are enjoying these videos and enjoying all of the work we put into and kind of bearing the rain and the bad weather, please make sure to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel it really helps the channel grow and also let us know that somebody is enjoying and watching this video so thank you very much this whole area of the forum looks absolutely insane i think if anybody's thinking how would ancient rome look like this would be the perfect depiction So we're done with the forum over there and we're now entering the main attraction which is the Colosseum. Some parts will be outside so we're still going to have to use the umbrella um, but the most important part is going to be underneath. So I'm super super excited for that. So this area here is they would drag the bodies from the arena up there through here and take them out through this black gate straight outside. Some were completely dead and some were almost dead. They tried to revive them and uh, make them fight again. So this is a really cool elevator. This is the elevator that they would use to take the animals to the arena. They would put it on the little trolley there and it would go out straight into the arena. So we are now in the outdoor portion of the Colosseum and we can see where the stands would be, where everybody would admire the fights here. And then we can see everything underneath. That's where we came through, we kind of walked through that maze. So what we're sitting on here is the actual arena this is where the arena would be and then you would have everything underneath this on the side would be where all the animals are kept and where the people were kept and they would be brought up by those elevators and that's the elevator that we saw earlier that's the top end of it and here in the arena is where all the fighting would take place and then you would have this little niches where people will sit and kind of control the fighting and everything and they would have buckets of sand to kind of throw up and cover the blood and 
kind of remove any dead animals or dead people, kind of move them out of the way. And they used to have nets right on top here to protect the spectators up there from anybody that was in the games, an animal or maybe even a, a person that would get out of hand that would try to go into the crowds. They actually had archers that would shoot them down if anything got out of control. That's the whole moral of this place. You know, I was really excited to come and visit it, but after hearing about the killings and everything that went down on here, this is not really a very joyful place. It's quite a place of sour where so many lives were lost for people and animals just, just for fun, basically, just uh, for entertainment purposes. So I guess a lesson for us from history of what can happen. So there were three total scenes that would happen during one of the shows. Show one, uh, scene one, was animals against other animals. They would bring animals here three, four days before the show and they would let them starve and aggravate them and make them angry so they would fight each other once they came out. And then the second scene were actually public executions of people that were condemned, people that did very bad things and they were condemned to the death. And then scene three were the gladiators. Um, I don't know that whole thing that we see or that we hear about of, you know, when somebody fell that they would feed them to the animals and all that. That didn't really happen. These scenes were completely separate. They were completely separate stages. You know, once one was done, they would just put all the animals back or whatever was left of them, they would put them back and then they would bring out another scene and so on. There was no real entertainment value in seeing, you know, like a wild animal eat a human or something like that. So that's a, I guess, a kind of misconception that I had. I don't know if that was just me or everybody else. Let me know in the comments below if you guys thought that was kind of animal against human like we saw in the movies and all that. So the tour is done, it's all over. We were the last group, like I mentioned before, and uh, we got to see the Colosseum basically as a private tour by ourselves. And on the final bit, the rain let up. So it was absolutely perfect. Now it's getting a little dark, so we're gonna get out of here. Hopefully everything else in Rome is just as nice as the Colosseum. So I'm gonna see you on the next adventure. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back. Today is much nicer weather so it's very fitting that we're gonna go visit the Vatican. So we woke up, we're gonna go have breakfast. Breakfast was great and now we're gonna call an Uber and make our way to the Vatican. Super excited to see that. We actually booked a tour to see all of the different uh, things around there, the 16th chapel and everything. And welcome to Vatican City. Uh, here you have a couple of things to see, but the top most ones are the Sixteenth Chapel, the Vatican Museum, and also the San Pietro Square and the San Pietro Cathedral. So let's go check them out. And welcome, this is the San Pietro Square. And there are not a lot of people here right now. Now we've been here before during the summer. And what I can tell you, it didn't look like this. This is pretty incredible to see it. Uh, there's a few people there queuing up for a couple of things, but mostly you can kind of walk around and kind of breathe here. It's usually jam-packed with people. So that's why we chose to come and visit Italy during the winter, just because there's going to be less lines. And if you're lucky and the weather holds up, it's actually very nice out. So I was under the impression that we're gonna have to, we're gonna get a tour guide, but we actually have these little phone looking things. Um, so it's just an audio guided tour and we can walk around here and uh, just find the corresponding number. You push it and you just listen to the information, which is even better for us. We really like it that way versus the guided tour. You kind of get rushed around. So let's check the museum out. This is the first one. And then the 16th chapel is right after.
So this is the Cortile de la Pina, or the pine cone courtyard, named after the big pine cone there. And it's a very nice place here. It also has a big round golden globe there that was sculpted back quite recently in the 1990s. Very interesting courtyard and kind of a nice uh, breath of fresh air coming out of the museum. So you kind of go through the different stages and this is the second one that we came. We came through the area with the pharaohs and then the courtyard and then we're gonna continue on. The level of detail on the statues is just incredible. I cannot imagine that they are hundreds, some are thousands of years old. I can only imagine the level of skill needed with the tools that they had at the time. They didn't have any electrical tools or any precision tools that we have today. Even today, making something like this purely out of stone by hand is pretty incredible. If you're into this kind of thing, this hallway is absolutely incredible. It is hundreds and hundreds of these statues. We just went through the Sistine Chapel, which is a very holy place, actually the most holy place in all of the Vatican. And unfortunately, there's no photos, no videos in there. You know, we have to be respectful of uh, the place. So it was very large and beautiful. Definitely a must see as you're passing through the museum. And now we're gonna continue on with our tour. So our tour has ended. We are here in the little cafeteria and we're gonna rest a little bit and find something to drink, something to eat. How can I sum up this whole experience? I think it was really, really cool. Um, the audio, the guided, audio guided tour was uh, cool, but I think would be even better if you do get an actual guide because there's so much to see here that it's impossible to see everything. So if you have an experienced guide that will show you the most important pieces and actually tell you about it, I think, it would be a better experience. So we spent about two and a half hours and we kind of ran through a couple of the areas. It's just so much. Uh, you would have to spend probably days and days to stay and examine and listen to everything. So I think a guide would be much better, but definitely an amazing experience. We really liked it. Uh, myself, I am more of a explore a mountain kind of guy. Museums are not 100% my thing, but even I enjoyed it, so 100%. So we're back here in St. Peter's Square and we have a small problem. In order to see the St. Peter Basilica, there is no more skip the line tickets available and the line is huge. So it goes all the way over there and then all the way out. So we're not gonna make it today. Even if we wait in line, we're probably not gonna make it in. And we don't wanna wait uh, anyway for maybe two, three hours because it's gonna be too much. So what we're gonna do is we're probably gonna attempt to come again tomorrow. So because we still have some time and the weather is still nice, we're gonna go check out another local monument and it's called Fontana di Trevi. It's one of the nicer and most popular fountains here and water features here in Rome. So let's go check it out. Fontana di Trevi is one of those seen once and done kind of places. It's always super, super, super crowded. So it's beautiful to see, definitely, but it's just go there, take a couple of pictures and kind of move on. Now we are gonna walk around these uh, beautiful neighborhoods here. Uh, we are in the center of Rome. A lot of restaurants are open, really pretty. The decorations are out, of course. Another uh, plus for visiting in winter, but now in the evenings it gets kind of chilly, so I actually put my jacket on and we're just gonna walk around and show you here the center of Rome. decided to actually walk to the hotel to see what else is there here in this beautiful city 
kind of finishing up our walking tour today. And we're gonna go kind of unwind a little bit and we'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Good morning and welcome back. Today is our last day here in Rome and we're starting it by exploring Piazza Navona or the Navona Square here. Uh, this beautiful fountain beside, behind me is the fountain of the four rivers. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, as is everything here in Rome. I swear to God, everywhere we go, everywhere you see, there's an old building, some kind of fountain, some kind of anything. It's, it's like a huge museum uh, in the outdoors. So we're blessed with good weather again. Uh, yesterday it looked like it's gonna rain today, at least in the first part of the day. But we woke up and no rain, we're actually getting a little bit of sun. So we're gonna take advantage of that and kind of walk around uh, here in the Piazza Navona. And we can also find here, this is St. Agnes Church. Check that place out. I've never seen a church, they're all so big and beautifully carved. So we're back here at the Vatican and we're waiting for our tour to start. It starts in about 25 to 30 minutes or so. And what I noticed is in the weekend, there are a lot more people. There are a lot more people on the streets, a lot more people at the museums and a lot more people almost everywhere. So top tip for visiting Rome, don't try not to come in the weekend if you can, uh, because it's gonna be very crowded, full of street vendors and people trying to sell you stuff. and it, becomes annoying at some point. So we're starting our tour of the Basilica of St. Peter, which is here behind me. And I gotta say, it looks a lot bigger in person. Jesus. Those statues up there, they look small from far away. They're actually six meters tall. So this is the first step where you can climb to the top. This is where we were all the way down there in the beginning. And if you fear adventurous, you can actually go all the way to the top up there. And you can have a beautiful view of the city, but there are 230 steps to get out there and they are super, super narrow. So oh, it is very narrow, as they said, and it is tilted to one side because this is a dome, kind of tilts. We we'll climb at a weird angle. And now it goes further up. So how do we sum up this whole experience? Is it worth it to climb all the way up here? I would say if you're reasonably fit and you have comfortable shoes, then you can definitely do it, especially now in the winter. It's not super, super hot. I imagine in the summer, it's much worse. Uh, if the weather is good, you can see all of Rome, 360 degrees. So yeah, I would say definitely go for it. Now that we can get up close and personal with these statues, these are the statues that were right on top of the Basilica. I can see how big they are. They are enormous. They don't look that big from the bottom, but they are very, very large. The lady did say they're six meters tall, but you can really appreciate them up close. So that's pretty much it for our trip here in Rome. Other things you should definitely try while visiting Rome in winter or summer or anytime would definitely be to try some nice Italian food. Now, we've been very guilty of this because we've been mostly eating sushi. There's an amazing sushi place by our hotel. So we've been, you know, eating a little bit of Italian food here and there, but it's been mostly Japanese. But we're definitely gonna change that tonight. I'm gonna go and find an amazing Italian restaurant and we're gonna get some nice Italian food from Rome because obviously we tried Italian food in other regions that we tried. And uh, we're gonna end the vlog here. Thank you very much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to smash the like button for us and subscribe to the channel. And as always, stay safe, be nice to each other, and we'll see you again next time.